This episode brought to you by Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, the PlayStation 5 experience you've been waiting for. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. Guy, remember it so you don't have to. Do you even need an intro? It's just another Scooby-Doo movie. As I've mentioned several times now, it's damn impressive just how long this series has been going in one form or another. Whether it be animation, live action, film, TV, comics, games, this franchise will never die. So much so, I have to make it clear what incarnation I'm reviewing, as it's kind of like saying you're talking about Batman. There's kind of a variety to choose from. This is the 2010 sequel to the live-action prequel to the motion picture series sent straight to television on Cartoon Network. All cleared up? The film was directed by Brian Levant. Well, top of my head, I don't recognize that name, so it can't be that bad. Wow, this guy's like a bad movie ninja! He strikes without you even knowing! Well... Maybe this'll be okay? He did direct one decent dog movie. <laughs> Which I'm realizing I haven't seen in decades. <sighs> Alright, let's try to be fair with Scooby-Doo and the Curse of the Lake Monster. Even though I didn't get into the last one, it is kind of cool that the entire cast did return to reprise the same roles. That might wear off a bit, though, as when they're trying to hunt down their latest disguised villain, we get one of the signatures of bad movies. Not saying as you know, though that's a very good guess. Uh-uh. It's cutting to one week earlier. It's you? Like it can be! I guess you can cut this film a little slack, as not only was it meant for kids, but it was released over ten years ago. When this cliché was just... bad. Falling somewhere in between saying he's right behind me, isn't he, and someone typing without ever using a spacebar. Oh, and by the way, Velma's mysteriously absent from the lineup. I wonder who the cloaked person's gonna be. Well, I have to wait an hour and a half before that mystery's solved, as we do cut to one week earlier, with Shaggy waiting for summer break to start and actually getting a few decent jokes. From having the clock go backwards, to the sign letters dropping at once, to everyone having confetti ready to throw as soon as the bell rings. As the credits roll, it's not a bad start. Not a bad start at all. <laughs> How dare Scooby's ass make me question things? Uh, guys. It looks like this is all a fantasy in Shaggy's head. So why did he imagine a tight shot on Scooby's butt cheeks? As Velma makes it clear, they have to start their summer employment. Who says people don't write good exposition anymore? It sure is lucky that Daphne's uncle is opening his new country club this summer. Without these summer jobs, we'd never be able to pay back old man Fricker for the damage we did to his barn. Okay, maybe as you know isn't that bad a cliche. But we're given a surprise that surprises no one. There's always been an undeniable chemistry between you two, but <laughs> when did the transformative reaction finally occur? Daphne, we have a show coming up and we need to present possibilities. <laughs> possibilities! They explained that this all started when they were at Old Man Fricker's house and Fred saved Daphne from those dangerous wires that were lowering her down. Are you okay? I am now. I never noticed when you're not wearing your I just killed a Boy Scout ascot, you're kind of cute. Whenever there's a shift in a relationship between two individuals within a group, it inevitably has repercussions on the group as a whole. Okay, Velma, I'll stop doing my You Love Daphne jokes as soon as you stop playing verbal plinko for them. Try stopping there, sweetie. They come across an old, dark general store, because what in Scooby-Doo isn't old and dark? And I'll admit, I chuckled at this character's introduction. <laughs> what are you mid-twenties teenagers doing here? You're going to the country club? She warns him about the lake monster nearby, but that doesn't stop them from going to Daphne's uncle, who owns a nearby country club where they plan to work. Uncle Thorny, this is the gang. Uncle Thorny, this is the gang. You heard it too. Did someone say spontaneous green screen and spontaneous romance? Shaggy, are you alright? Well, like I am now. Dude, you'd have to be high to think she's into you. Oh. 
Even Scooby's not falling for that. Look at this reaction he gives when Shaggy says he and Velma might be an item. I think I might have just had a hail-off moment with Velma. That look says it all. He's like, bitch, she's as straight as a silly straw. You'd have a better chance with Fred. You and Daphne, is that something you recommend? This is gonna end with an orgy. The mystery of that machine is how many people can bang in it. This is another cute bit as Fred and Daphne have different ideas of what their relationship is, as Velma thinks Fred is the football player type who'd want to play the field. I never thought Fred would be the relationship type, but he totally is. Just not the relationship type. I'm a football player. We like to uh, play the field. <laughs> I think this franchise has come to grips with there will never be a likable version of Fred. Can't tell if this is clever joke or not. Hey, Scoob. Mm -hmm. That was the first dog day of summer. Mm, it's on par with a joke a Pixar writer came up with crumpled up and threw out, but he still came up with it. Shaggy joins Thelma on the beach where she comes across a moonstone. You know, the Native Americans believe they held this mystical connection with the moon. There by the name. <laughs> Others would say it's a ring pop, probably because it's a ring pop. Shaggy starts confessing his love to her, but she suddenly feels deathly ill. I think Shaggy hitting on anyone spawns that reaction. How do you think Vincent Price really died? Ooh. Like, you better sit down. I'm just gonna go back to the room and lie down for a little while. Is it my wig? Is it two channel awesome? Later that night, a party is thrown, and today, Scooby-Doo meets Nichelle Nichols! Oh, how could I ever say no to my biggest contributor? Any day I'm not next to Shatner is a win for me. But the party is crashed by the lake monster, and I actually like the design of this thing. It's a simple idea, just a half-man, half-toad with sharp teeth, but that's weirdly enough. It's like Lon Chaney Jr. bitten by Michigan J. Frog. It kinda works. You guys thinking what I'm thinking? <sighs> No. Come on! <laughs> Everybody escapes, and our team naturally takes it upon themselves to solve this mystery. They go first to the only person to take a picture of the creature, who of course lives in a spooky lighthouse. Just once, I wish we found the mystery that started in a cheery futon showroom. Futons offer far more support than traditional mattresses. Today, Scooby-Doo meets Akia! Speaking of mysteries, you notice someone strangely absent from a lot of these scenes? Maybe the title character? Hey, uh, what up? <laughs> so, oh, you see there's both flora and fauna out there, huh? Yeah, I know, he's probably an expensive effect, but he feels shoehorned in most of the time. In fact, the chemistry between him and Shaggy seems replaced with the chemistry between Velma and Shaggy. A more appropriate title would be Raging Somewhere Hormones That Need to Pork in the Lake Monster, who may get porked. Oh, Velma, what is that sweet fragrance you're wearing? It's called O oh De Nataro, and it's clearly not working. Looks like we have a song sequence coming up. So who's gonna be the band this time? Green Day or a retro callback to some 70s group? By the light, By the light of the silvery moon. Well, that's more retro than I was expecting. Okay, a little odd, but I guess I give credit going with something different and not just another generic rock band sound. There's the pandering I've grown to love. Keep it shining in June. I gotta say, for a series about teens solving mysteries with a talking dog is a little weird. I don't know why, but I love Fred's little laugh at his own joke when Daphne asks if Shaggy could fall in love with Velma. You don't think Shaggy can have a crush on Velma, do you? Not unless she turned into a steaming bowl of chili cheese fries. <laughs> like, yeah, I Fred the hell out of that joke. Go, Fred. <laughs> they come across the lake monster and discover it's nothing more than old man we haven't met yet. Uh, I was just using the legend to make a quick buck. It looks like this is the lighthouse attendant. However, he wasn't the one at the party terrorizing everybody. If this thing's really back, you best leave now while you still can. Come on, you don't really believe the monster's real, do you? It's probably just some prankster with a better costume. Or the more obvious explanation, lizard people. He tells the legend of the lake monster and how the settlers of the town came across an old lady in a cave with a unique name. Grubwort was her name. Wanda Grubwort. That sounds like an STD Harry Potter would get. When the settlers refused to leave, she created the lake monster, but they got revenge by going Joan of Arc on her ass. But hell with that, let's continue to see how catching someone from a van can lead to an obsession so creepy Peppy Le Pew would say slow down. Hey Shaq, what you doing? Oh, um, nothing. <laughs> A fair amount of these jokes do get some laughs, until you think about how disturbing they are. And then they get even more laughs. 
Daphne sees Fred showing off his five iron to some ladies, which does not sit well with her. Hey, Daph. Hmm. Well, this should result in an interesting- You are not gonna believe what I found in the security footage. Okay, we'll get to that later. Hey, remember when we had a dog? Looks like we have two pranksters on our hands. If you zoom in right here, we can see who's inside that cloak. You can? Oh, look, it's coming into focus. It is? <laughs> Well, even if that didn't happen, what would you have seen? Aha, it was unrendered Tron effect. Actually, it was Velma who accidentally poured her drink all over the equipment. I'm really sorry, guys. I'll tender my resignation from the group if you wish. That's a bit of a leap. If that's how mistakes are punished around here, Shaggy and Scooby's heads would be on pikes right now. Which I'm not convinced hasn't happened to Scoob, but it's been over 13 minutes and he has not appeared in the story. Fear not, though, this Depp Heard relationship should tide you over. So glad that we're on the same page. Well, he's not the president of the drama club for nothing. Fred, no, really, is he anyone's favorite character? Look into my eyes, then look into those eyes. It's time to join the resistance, because Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate for PlayStation 5 is here. The shadowy Shinra Corporation is draining the planet's life force for their own gain. But home is not lost. The mercenary clan strike teams with Tifa, Barrett, and Eric to take Shinra down. Whether they succeed depends on you. We are excited for Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate! This definitive edition of the award-winning Final Fantasy VII Remake has expanded graphical, gameplay, and system enhancements and brings Final Fantasy's visuals to the next level. It's got more realistic backgrounds, it's got better lighting, it's all around beautiful to look at. Mmm, beautiful. Integrate also gives you the ability to switch between graphics mode if you want 4K and performance mode if you prefer super smooth action with 60 frames per second. On top of that, Integrate even comes with episode intermission, a brand spanking new episode featuring Wu Tai Ninja Yuffie as the main character. Play as Yuffie as she conspires with Avalanche HQ to steal the ultimate materia from the Shinra Electric Power Company. Play as new characters and enjoy expanded gameplay experience featuring multiple new combat additions. If you've already bought Final Fantasy VII Remake for PS4, you can download a free PS5 enhancement for the PS5 console. Episode Intermission is available as a separate purchase after you upgrade. What are you waiting for? The eyes in my eyes in my eyes to fall out? Well done! This is a loop! Instead, buy Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate for PlayStation 5 today. Go to squex.link slash remake nc. That's s-q-e-x dot link backslash remake nc. Go. Go now. Don't forget to check me out playing Kingdom Hearts Fridays from 6 to 9 on Twitch. We got content six days a week. Hope to see you there. and Shaggy go make some sandwiches. Oh yeah, this is a Jabberjaw movie! But he comes across the lake monster as well as some wardrobe cameos. <laughs> Scooby saves Shaggy from the repeated footage and, well, can't act like you didn't see this joke coming. Hey, not bad. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. They can't find Velma, and they presume the monster kidnapped her because this is such a good mystery. But they find her later on the beach. She's dead! Oh, I can't look! Guys? You can stop sucking my teats now. She's fine for the moment, but a ton of warts are seen on her hand, which can only mean one thing. Absolutely nothing. Blue's Clues had more gripping mysteries than this. You think the monster's real and someone's using it to dig up something on the grounds? Yeah. Problem is, we don't have a single clue about who's using it. Well, that's strange. If only we had some kind of clue. Diablo Mia Corpo! <laughs> well, with a blood-hungry monster on the loose that can strike at any moment, this seems as good a time as any to ask Velma on a date. Shaggy, you know what? I will go on a date with you tonight. Don't do it, Velma! He's got more diseases than a jar on Dr. Mario! And he doesn't do it doggy style. Speaking of which, Scooby tries to help Shaggy get ready while dusting himself off as well. I'm gonna have to fly solo on this one tonight. Solo? I know that's a change of pacing how you've been MIA for almost all my scenes, but I'm sure Sandy Duncan needs your help or something. Scoop is of course crushed that absolutely nothing has changed as Velma puts on her finest candy necklace and Shaggy lets out all the classic one-liners. I, I like corn dogs. 
Whatever's wrong with you is no little thing. I want this night to be perfect. Ah! Oh, that was weird. Back to this possessed monster mystery we can't solve. Ever since we've been here, I just haven't felt like myself. I mean, am I the only one who finds it strange none of these meals are served in skulls? Scooby sneaks in as the waiter and Shaggy tries to shoo him off. But would you do it for a, a Scooby snack? I can't be bought. Mm. Aside from practically anything that can be bought. Shaggy tries giving Velma another moonstone he found and she's instantly drawn to it, saying she suddenly has to go. Coincidentally, the lake monster goes after Fred and Daphne shortly after. A part of me likes this callback to the Scooby-Doo intro where a monster hand tries to grab Daphne. But it's a little odd in this version how there's not another attempt. Like, gotcha, eh. The depressions of life will get her. Fred and Daphne are locked in a room that starts filling with water. Seems as good a time as any to bring up dating issues. Why do we call one of those guys you were playing tennis with? Maybe he'd know what to do. I knew it, you are jealous. Yeah, maybe I am. Hey, you know what's good for that? Not dying. Not dying is great for that. They managed to get out and, well, why not follow a decades-old sitcom cliché with another? I at least buy that Scooby and Shaggy are actual jilted lovers. Excuse me, you are on my side of the room. Don't make me, I don't know, pee on you. How does he socially operate in this world? As much as I mock the bad detective work, I will admit, I didn't catch on to this. Remember that creepy old general store we stopped at? It was called Trowberg's. Hmm, if you spell Trowberg backwards, you get Grubwort. <sighs> the mirror was even nice enough to grammatically correct it for us! They go to the owner of the general store and chase her down. <laughs> In here! I heard her, ah ha 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 ha, this way. Of course, we get the hallway of doors, Chase. Can't a villain ever haunt a studio apartment? And they finally catch her. It can be! Okay, I'll give the film credit. I really thought it was gonna be Velma, but they cleverly manipulated you. No, of course it's Velma. That's five Scooby-Doo mystery movies that virtually have no mystery. No, no one, one can, can stop, stop me! me. <laughs> she disappears and the store owner explains that she's possessed by the spirit of the witch. My first love and she's turned into an evil witch. Join the club. It cut just before Daphne shanked him. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is amazed that they couldn't figure out it was Velma. Admittedly, it does take a special brand of barrel-aged stupid. I can't believe we missed it. I guess we were all just too wrapped up in our own little dramas to catch the really big one going on. Drama, uncontrollable sex lust, they're practically the same thing. She did say horny earlier, didn't she? They make it to the cave where she's hiding and discover she's been making even more battle toads. I also have to admit Shaggy's plan for how to stop her is surprisingly pretty funny. If you, you got a plan, him? Shaggy, go for it. Okay. Oh, Velma Daisy Dinkley, you stop that this instant! That was literally it. It's so brain dead, I legitimately laughed my ass off at it. The frogs hunt them down, but Scooby does the old paint tunnel on the wall routine. You know, if I was a humanoid amphibian brought to life for a few minutes by a supernatural entity, I'd fall for that too. Run! Run! <laughs> Jesus, Fred! He chews with Lance Armstrong before coming here? What's going on? <laughs> Not the dark, but the light. Shaggy figures out how to win Velma back by singing her favorite song, Light of the Silvery Moon. Don't you hate it when someone sneezes on the effects before they go live? Wicked witch! I would have gotten away with it! If it wasn't for you meddling kids and your rotten dog! Ironic, seeing how there's no actual kids or dogs in this movie at all. Shaggy, just kiss me already. Shaggy saves Velma, they defeat the monsters together, and they share an epic kiss. All clear signs it's time to break up. I don't know too much about chemistry. I do. There just wasn't any. I think that was the writer's note on the script that just forgot to edit out the pointless romance with it. Maybe we're just better off being friends. You know what? Maybe we all are. It's like what they said at the end of Princess Bride. Eh. To show his thanks, Daphne's uncle gives them a giant check, and yeah, they got a little giggle out of me. And we end on where the real romance of this movie lied. Don't worry, Scoob. No matter what happens, I'll always be here for you. Oh, Shaggy. 
Let's do butt stuff tonight. Let's do butt stuff tonight. We end on a music video in different styles because we never did settle on a tone. See Michael Berryman from Hills Have Eyes because why not? And the true mystery finally begins. Did Nichelle Nichols just walk by the set or what? Why was she in this? And that was Scooby-Doo Curse of the Lake Monster. Honestly, it's one of this guy's better films. Do I recommend it for adults? No, but it's not meant for adults. It's clearly meant for kids. And as kids' movies go, it's mostly fine. A couple jokes get a laugh, the groaners don't make you groan too hard, it looks like everybody's having fun, and even the effects for a 2010 Cartoon Network TV movie are surprisingly better than you would expect. There's a lot of clumsy stuff that doesn't make sense, but it knows what it is. A small TV movie based on a cartoon for little kids. And as those go, this is passable enough. Not high praise, but given the live action films we've gotten in the past, even medium praise is quite the achievement. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember, so you don't have to. Uncle Thorny, this is the gang. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week we are doing a uh, Tipping Point Community. This is a San Francisco one. I'm wearing a uh, whoop, Bob's Burgers t-shirt so I figured do a uh, San Francisco one. Um, does take place in San Francisco right now. I'm gonna feel really stupid if it does. I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, uh, this is about this uh, uh, wonderful charity and it is a nonprofit organization committed to fighting poverty in the San Francisco Bay Area uh, for the individuals and families too poor to meet basic needs. They support the development of new poverty fighting solutions by providing guarantees with, uh, with the risk capital and tools needed to think Big. They connect them with the best in class pro bono partners to provide services and expertise that many groups could not access on their own. Uh, with a four star rating on Charity Navigator, this is a wonderful nonprofit to give time, attention, and donations to. So definitely check them out. Their site is really, really cool. And like a lot of these really great uh, uh, charities, they have great detail about where the money goes and what they do with it. So definitely check it out. And uh, if you're not able to donate to it, share the link. Just share the good that people do, man. That's about it. And I'll see you next time. Take care.